Howdy, I'm Joey Kornman, and in this short video, I'm gonna teach you a really easy way to add life to your animation by using follow through in After Effects. This technique is an example of what we go over in our animation bootcamp class at School of Motion, so make sure to check that out if you like what you learned today. Also, you can download the project files I'm using in this video to follow along or to practice this technique after you're done watching. Details are in the description. What is follow through? Well, follow through, also called overlapping action, is the idea that when an object moves, different parts of that object move at different times. Here are some examples. This project from B. Grandinetti has follow through in a few places, like in this moment when the girl jumps back and her limbs and hair move at separate times, and during the type reveal at the end. In this piece that Andrew Vuko did for Google, the overlapping action is a bit more subtle, but definitely adds some visual interest. So here we have a really simple logo reveal and we've already animated most of it. And what I want you to notice is how stiff that feather feels. Feathers are soft objects. And so if it really was rotating up like this at the end, it wouldn't feel like a stiff board. Now, if you notice, this feather is just one layer that came in from Photoshop. If it was on multiple layers, maybe we could sort of parent them together and rotate them a little bit manually to make it feel like it's bending. But what do we do when we have artwork that's all on one layer? So here's our goal. When the feather finishes writing on this line and starts to rotate up, I want it to bend naturally like a feather using follow through, AKA overlapping action. There are two steps to this process, and the first step is to use puppet pins, which can be found up here. The puppet pin tool works by letting us place pins inside of artwork like this, and then we can manipulate those pins to deform the artwork any way we want. Now I'm gonna undo that because I need to set this up a very specific way. What I wanna do is place pins along the spine of the feather like this. So I'm gonna put one down towards the bottom, and then I'm gonna put, I don't know, maybe three or four more up along the length of it, and then one at the very tip like this. Now, if we look at the timeline, you'll see that there have been position keyframes set for each puppet pin as I set them down into the feather. And what this means is I can now select my puppet effect and I can move these pins around and actually hand animate the deformation of this feather. The problem with doing it this way, and it may already be obvious to you, is that if I'm not careful, I could stretch the artwork out. And doing this by hand is gonna be really, really tedious and not very efficient or easy to do. So what we need is a way of keeping the distance between these pins constant so that we don't accidentally stretch out our artwork. So to do that, we're going to create bones, something that we can rig up to make this really easy. And you can do this manually in After Effects, though I don't recommend it because there's a lot of gotchas. We are gonna use a free tool called Duik Basel, and the link to that can be found in the description. Now, Duik is primarily a rigging tool, and that is actually what we're doing here. So watch closely, and then I'll explain exactly what's going on once we're ready. So what I'm gonna do is select my layer, and I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these puppet pins in my timeline. You can see they're all selected here. Next thing I wanna do is make sure that in my Duik Basel window, I have the rigging tools open, and then I'm gonna move over and select links and constraints. Then I'm going to click Add Bones. Wonderful, bones have been added and they look like puppet pins uh, and they're a little bit hard to see so I'm just gonna quickly change the color of each one to something a little more high contrast. So Duik has created a bunch of guide layers here and if you don't know what a guide layer is, any layer in your timeline you can right click or control click and activate this to make it a guide layer. Guide layers do not render but they can be useful visual guides while you're building your animation. So if I move any of these guide layers around, you'll see that now my artwork deforms. It follows that pin. The bone is now tied to it. And it did this automatically in a few seconds, which is why I recommend you use the free tool rather than set this up manually. The next thing we wanna do is set up a joint chain for this feather. And if you've never seen a joint chain set up before, well, it's really, really easy. And in a minute, you're gonna understand why it's so powerful. I'm gonna start from the top. This is puppet pin six, and I'm going to parent six to five, five to four, four to three, three to two, and two to one, just like that. Now, why did I do that? Well, if I take puppet pin one now and I move it around, the entire feather moves. If I rotate puppet pin one, the entire feather rotates. But watch this. If I rotate the second puppet pin, 
the feather bends. If I rotate the third puppet pin, the feather bends from further up. And so you can see how now we have this rotation control that actually bends the feather, but it maintains the length of it automatically. Pretty slick. Now, one thing that I do wanna do is take puppet pin one and parent it to the artwork itself. The reason for this is that the artwork already has rotation keyframes on it. You can see that as it finishes drawing, it rotates up. So how do we achieve follow through? Well, think about where this feather should be bending from. It should probably be bending from about this pin or maybe from this pin, we can sort of see what's going on here. But if we look at these rotation keyframes in the graph editor, shift F3, you can see that in addition to rotating, there's also some extra animation principles going on here. There's a little bit of an anticipation right there where it sort of dips down before it rotates up. And then there's an overshoot at the end. By the way, these are things we talk about in Animation Bootcamp. If you wanna dive deeper into animation, check that class out. So I want this same rotation movement to sort of percolate its way up the feather. I'm not sure that's the right word, percolate, but I'm gonna stick with it. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to go into our timeline and we're gonna copy these keyframes and I wanna paste them starting with puppet pin two all the way to puppet pin five. Now, why am I not doing puppet pin six? Well, because rotating this pin will not do anything and I'm not quite sure I want the feather to actually be bending this far down the chain. So I'm just gonna hit paste, watch what happens. Okay, now it's obviously a little bit wonky at the beginning here, but don't worry, we can fix that. But I do want you to notice what's happening already. The feather no longer looks stiff like a board. Now there's not actually any overlap happening yet. We're gonna set that up in a minute. But first, let's go ahead and fix the beginning of this. So if we look at the keyframes here, we can see that what's going on is at the beginning, these rotation values are not zero and they should be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zero these out. All right, so I've zeroed that out, but now there's way too much rotation happening here. I'm gonna select all of these keyframes at the same time and go back into my graph editor. And now I can see exactly what's going on. So for most of the feather, I want this first move to be a lot smaller. So I have a few options here. I can just grab all of these keyframes at the same time and move them down and you can see what's going on there. But another thing I could do is turn on the transform controls down here. And then I could select all of the keyframes I could hold command and set my anchor point to be the very last keyframe. And then I can hold command and adjust the scale of this box proportionally, which will keep the timing and the overall vibe of this animation, but it will scale it down proportionally while leaving the start and end values the same. This is a very useful tool we use a lot in Animation Bootcamp. Cool, so now that first move, it's still a little bit harsh, but we're gonna work on it a little bit more. But you can notice that we are starting to get a softer feeling on the feather. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna actually have parts of this feather move at different times. We want overlapping action, and this is actually pretty easy to set up. So if we look at the rotation keyframes, starting with the feather and then going up the bone chain, you'll see they're all lined up exactly. What we wanna do is stagger them. And we're gonna start by just staggering them one frame each. So I'm gonna move these over one frame and these over one frame, and I'm just gonna stagger all of the keyframes. With that done, there's already an obvious change. When this feather kind of dips down before it pops back up while it's doing its anticipation, you almost feel a whipping movement to it, right? the tip of it moves a little bit later than the rest of it. Now that this is set up, I can actually turn off the visibility of these bones, by the way. So that's feeling pretty good, but what if we wanted that feather to feel even a little bit softer? Well, an easy way to do that is to just increase the amount of overlap. So each keyframe was staggered by one frame from the next set of keyframes. Why don't we stagger them two frames? And now it's even softer and more obvious what the feather is doing. And I'm actually digging that, but just to show you that we can use that transform box to really dial this in even better, I'm gonna select all the keyframes again, only on the bones, go into my graph editor. I can grab this set of keyframes here and I can just scoot those down a little bit. So there's a little bit more of an overshoot at the end there. If you look at the tip of the feather, whips up like that. Well, that is quite lovely, isn't it? That's it, pretty simple, huh? Hit subscribe if you want more tips like this one and make sure to check out the description so you can download the project files from this video. If you wanna learn more about using the principles of animation inside of After Effects with the help of industry pros, check out Animation Bootcamp from School of Motion. Thanks for watching.